Alright guys, welcome to another video and in this tutorial I want to show you guys another way and this is actually kind of a simple way that you can test multiple conditions as well. So this is actually really good whenever you have the user enter input into the keyboard and you want to check and make sure they entered it properly. So let's just go ahead and make a simple program to ask the user if they like bagels or not. Because I know that cat outside my window, he loves bagels, so he would say yes, but we'll see what the user has to say. So go ahead and we'll just have the user type in Y for yes and N for no. So we can just store that in one character. So char answer is what we'll put their uh, response in. And for the question, we'll just print it out. And we'll just say, do you like bagels? And also, let's give them that little prompt, um, Y slash N, to let them know they can only enter yes or no. And also, for the scan, we'll kick that to a new line. Now, of course, give them a place where they can enter their answer, scan F. Now, for this, remember, in between your parentheses, hit a space, percent C, since we're only doing one character. And where do we want to store their answer? Well, we want to store it right in the variable answer. And we need that ampersand sign because it is not an array. So basically, right now, we stored either the letter Y or N in answer. Now, we want to make sure that they actually did write Y or N and they didn't type something stupid like um, P or type the word meatball or anything like that. Because if they did, well, then it just like broke our computer program. So let's go ahead and make the basic structure first. So we'll just go ahead and make a test eventually that if they enter the correct data, then we'll print out, I don't know, what can you say? Like, um, we'll just say, I feel this. No, what can you say? Good job. You didn't mess anything up. We'll say we're taking a survey about bagels or something. Now else, what's going to happen is we're going to tell us, say, basically, we're going to test if they entered Y or N. And if they did, good job. Else, they must have, like, typed in the word uh, tuna fish or entered, like, um, the word or the letter X by accident or something like that. So we'll just print out something very mean, like, keyboard much? All right, so now we need to figure out how do we test this thing. And the reason that it's a little bit different than that and is because remember, last time we used two ampersands and both of those things had to be true. However, we can't do it this time because there's no way that the user can enter Y and N. Both of those things can't be true. So we need to use a new test and that is called or. And that if you look on the um, enter key on your keyboard, you see the backslash, at least it is on mine. If you hold shift and press it twice, I call them the pipe symbols. I don't know what they're really called. I think they're called something like that. But in C language, two pipe symbols stands for or. So basically we're going to have test one, which we're going to say is the character equal to Y. And we're going to say test two, which we say or is equal to N. As long as it's equal to one of those things, then it's good to go. So the first thing we'll put is, is answer equal to Y? Or is their answer equal to N? As long as it's one of those things, at least one of these things has to be true to say, good job, you didn't mess up. If it's not, and both of those things are false, then we'll just say keyboard much. So run this and we'll say, do you like bagels? And we'll hit, uh, you know, N, hit enter. And it said, good job, you didn't mess up anything. Now, let's say the user types in something silly, like, do you like bagels? Z, hit enter like an idiot. And it says, keyboard much? And of course, we typically want to display like a proper error message, it's like, hey dude, you uh, actually need to press Y or N. But that's the basics of OR. And also, if there's an instance like um, this where both of these conditions were true, then this would still run. Basically, just one of these conditions need to be true, this one, or this one, or both of them. And let me go show you guys an example of both of them. So we'll say is, um, is 5 less than 90 
or is uh, 10 um, equal to 10? Well, this is true. 5 is less than 90, and 10 is equal to 10. So even though both of these are true, we still need to do this, even though it doesn't really matter. We still get this. So I just want to explain to you guys that one, the first one has to be true, the second one, or both of them. It only doesn't return true if both of these are false. So hopefully you guys understood that, and if not, just play around with it for a little bit, and you guys will get it. So that is pretty much um, all of the basic text, or excuse me, tests I want to talk to you guys about. And in the next tutorial, well, I guess I'll just teach you guys that in the next tutorial. So thank you guys for watching. See you then.